Welcome to this holy point in time, right before Baganga makes a series of morally questionable decisions. But before we gray our morality, a quick recap. Baganga met a bunch of demigod freaks in his closet. The party mercilessly tracked and killed a big spooky dragon. And finally, both Derende and Baganga fell deeply in love. Oh. All right, now that you're caught up, let's get into it. Baganga is big chillin' in his command room when he receives two very important guests. The first is an individual named Valg. In order to help the crusade and donate to a cause he believes in, Valg tells the commander about a tribe in Sarkoris named Blackwater. Blackwater was researching weapons for the sole purpose of fighting back the world wound. Unfortunately, this tribe received no aid from its neighbors during the rough times. Blackwater and its valuable secrets have since been lost to time. But luckily, Velg has a map that would lead the party straight there. The second important individual to enter Bunga's, frankly, cool, epic command room is a drunk man dressed in rags called Faberdeen. He claims he is the fallen king of Iz, a territory in Sarkoris. In exchange for help reclaiming his kingdom, he promises to aid the Crusades' war effort once his armies are re-established. Look, this guy is clearly lying and trying to exploit Baganga. But... The trickster button showed up. So, he indulges this man's wild fantasies and hopes to God that this will somehow pay off in the future. So, Thabardeen will vibe in the tavern and drink to his heart's content, courtesy of the lovely Dresden taxpayers, of course. While this happens, Bugunger will try to find a way to go to the Royal Is Bloodline burial ground and check their lineage stone. Luckily, it's time for another closet trickster meeting where a certain magical flying creature could lend its aid. Once in the closet, Baganga notices a new face at the table. His name is Alekino, and he's from hell. Once again, they debate on different solutions for the world wound problem. For example, Alekino wants to set up a toll that would force creatures to pay taxes every time they try to cross realms. Everyone has their own opinions and objections, so of course, just like last time, nothing really gets done. So, aboard Baganga cracks his fingers and speedruns any percentage the sowing of chaos. Oh. Oh, yes. Once again, passing all of his chaotic speech checks and raising false doubts and suspicions amongst council members. Once he's done being a kill-o-mix, he asks Cobblehoo for a ride to Polaris Fall, where he'll be able to confirm the lineage of Thabardeen, the royal drunk dude. Cobblehoof reluctantly agrees, and somehow carries the entire party to the burial ground. It's the gang's first time in Sarkoris, and honestly, kind of a shithole. It's raining what seems to be blood, and everything is on fire. Looking around, the party find a bunch of angry dead people, and the lineage stone tablet. To everyone's surprise, Faberdeen is not listed on the rock. So the party hightail it back to the tavern and confront him. Oh god. Thabardeen Quintissimus Hierophantel. Thabardeen Quintissimus Hierophantel. Thabardeen Quintissimus Hierophantel. Once again, he doubles down and lies through his teeth, saying that his full name is Quintissimus... Th fuck. Once again, he doubles down and lies through his teeth, saying that his real name is Thabardeen Quintissimus Hierophantel. He also lists a bunch of random names that are supposed to be his uh, acquaintances and family members. But instead of exposing him for his lies, Baganga eggs him on and pretends to believe him. Once again, hoping and praying that something will come out of this. But the moment Baganga affirms Thabardine's story, the wound on his chest begins glowing, and the stone tablet shifts and changes, turning all the lies that were just spewed into reality. Thabardine suddenly has a crown on his head and is now actually, officially, mathematically, biologically, king of his. Baganga's mythical powers have somehow actually changed history. So to celebrate the arrival of the new true king, he will hold a coronation right here in Dresden. But it will take time to prepare. So in the meantime, the party head out on another wicked sick adventure. Their destination? Blackwater's long-lost territory. Their objective? I don't know, maybe like... 
hurt whoever's there and maybe steal their shit? Arriving at the destination described in Velg's map, the party realized that it's strangely high tech. 3080s and funny monkeys, as far as the eye could see. The moment they step in, they're immediately assaulted by cyborg people who wish to modernize them. <laughs> oh, god dang it. Time to stretch me muscles. This one's mine. I'm so tired. You won't survive me. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Taking a closer look at their corpses, the party realized that these people were completely brain dead. They were basically meat puppets, controlled by a metal circlet that's been shoved onto and into their skull. It's not just humans either. Whoever's behind this is strong enough to subdue and, uh, surgerize high-level demons. Deeper in, they find a, what seems to be, semi-conscious human being named Chief Kara. So, of course, they beat her to a pulp. The Inheritor! Chief Kara, now weak and battered, begins dumping lore. Come on, come on, sit down. It's lore time. Backwards Arcoris wasn't a desolate wasteland. Her tribe were weak and weary from fighting back endless hordes of demons spilling from the world wound. So when a man called Hundred Faces came along and offered them salvation, most of their tribe reluctantly accepted. Unfortunately, this salvation came at the cost of their free will and eventually, lives. Their current goal is to hide in a cave and amass a giant army of robotic slaves so that they can wipe out the demons. Chief Kara, having spoke her last lore, dies on the cold hard floor of Hundred Faces' facility. Quick second mini lore dump. Hundred Faces is a Numerian, which was an advanced civilization that got wiped out by an apocalypse. The party continue wandering the halls with the cute flashy lights. Locked away in a closet, the party find the fucking Doom Helmet which of course now fittingly rests upon Regal's skull. Anyway, the gang come across two arcane emitters that are currently blocking off a bridge. Not knowing how to solve this puzzle, Baganga juices up Lon, turning him into a living mongrel ballistic missile. The party find Hundred Faces sitting atop his mechanical throne. He reveals that Baganga was baited by Velg to venture deep into this facility. Fucking knew it. Because a modernized Baganga would be a great boon to his mechanical army. But the party will not allow themselves to be machinified. So it's now time to legally rip and tear. Kneel before me. I think I did it. Baganga, last one standing, lands the final blow, and Hundred Faces collapses on the floor. Before fully dying, he hands Baganga a code, and of course, some sweet, sweet lore. Hold on, let me sit down for lore time. Hold on. Okay. Hundred Faces was also just a flesh machine serving its computer overlord. Its only purpose was to ensure the preservation and perfection of the holy PC. His body is no longer capable of serving that purpose. So he desperately hands over the keys to Baganga, hoping that he's evil enough to lead an army of corpses. Or should I say, morally gray enough. Because of course he takes command of three troops during these trying times. Are you kidding me? Come on. So from now on, the 3080 cave will continue to lure in innocent civilians while the crusade accepts modernized corpses into its ranks. 
and no one will question. So the party returned to Dresden and rest up. While they were gone, Thabardine's coronation happened, making him a king that's recognized by a state. The first mission that he gives to the gang as king is to find an old decrepit hut where an old hag used to make the best moonshine in the world. God, I hope this pays off somehow. Unfortunately, they can't make it to the hut this episode because it's all the way down there. Anyway, that's all I got. If you made it all the way here, then all right. And if you have extra time on your hands, consider checking out my friends and the full playlist for some good, happy, fun times. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub, and visually consume this delectable outro.